Hello and welcome to episode 136 of Aviadev Insight Africa, the podcast offering a window to the world of African aviation with your host, John Howell, CEO and founder of Aviadev Africa. The pandemic's offered a unique opportunity for us all to take a deep breath and reevaluate the direction of travel. Of course, the search for a vaccine and in the meantime, implementing a unilateral and robust testing process globally is the number one priority right now to instill passenger confidence and get people flying again. However, today we're going to be talking about something else that's really important and really pertinent in the current market, which is how new technologies can be harnessed to improve efficiency and ultimately airline profitability. Now, to discuss this topic, I'm delighted to be joined by an industry expert. Miratab Tekle is the uh, Director of Group Integrated Marketing Communications at Ethiopian Airlines and has already presided over some major changes at the airline. So today we're going to find out a little bit more about these. Welcome to the podcast, Miratab. Thank you, John. Thank you for having me. Fantastic. Well, we were last together about six months ago in Addis, um, and it was, uh, it was such a lovely experience to see the Skylight Hotel and take part in um, the Aviation Africa conference over there as well. Um, but let's start with you, and we've promised to do this for a, for a few months now. So let's start with an introduction to you, an introduction to your role. Um, you know, what's your remit and what do you do for Ethiopian Airlines? Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm now in charge of Director of Integrated Marketing Communication for Ethiopian. Uh, a decade experience with Ethiopian. I started my career actually as assistant lecturer in Axum University uh, with technology background. Uh, during the, my stay in the university, I found out that I had to be more practitioner. I want to solve real world problems. And then I get an opportunity to join Ethiopian as a programmer, developing small softwares, in-house softwares. And then I promoted to uh, manager business intelligence and integration in charge of corporate data warehouse, integrating uh, different systems and providing insight for the management and integration of several heterogeneous systems within Ethiopian. And as head of IT, uh, I was in charge of digitally transforming uh, Ethiopian Airlines uh, group uh, and uh, the, the current role. I'm in charge of more business, e-commerce. So having the technical, te technical uh, experience and career paths and blending with a new opportunity of business. And I'm now driving the e-commerce business for Ethiopia. Fantastic. So, um, and I believe you were at university there in Addis as well. You went, you studied in, in Ethiopia. Yes, I studied in uh, Addis, uh, Addis Ababa University, Computer Science Department. Fantastic. So let's talk a little bit about the Ethiopian digital kind of transformation, because as somebody who travels with the airline a lot, and I know there'll be lots of listeners that obviously do as well, it's been quite marked. I've been able to see it over the last few years, the, the implementation of the technology. So sort of how and why, what, what kind of sparked this? Um, was it just the, the, the bigger plan of the airline saying, okay, we need to start looking at technological solutions, you know, so why and how have you digitally adopted and adapted over the last few years? Yeah, it, it all starts with uh, positioning the technology in the corporate strategy. Uh, back in 2010, when we roll out Vision 2025, one of the strategic pillars for the vision is technology. And technology is actually the, uh, the main core competency to meet our cost leadership strategy uh, and also uh, service delivery. When you talk about the cost leadership, it's all about running the business more efficiently, driving excellence, and technology becomes the core. And if we talk about the service, we are saying running a cost leader company with global standard service. So service in our age is digital, how we can provide a digital customer experience. So the technology is positioned as a core competency uh, to help Ethiopians stay competitive in the business. So in the past 10 years, uh, initially, uh, the technology role was somehow support, supporting infrastructure supports, and also dealing with vendors. Uh, with, we have with a small group of IT engineers. Uh, we have implemented a lot of business with vendors. It's all about cost optimization. It's automation, automating business. 
But back in 2015, uh, we launched another program. Our agility was actually uh, mainly managed by vendors. As you, as you know, the release cycle is like five years, three years. We couldn't ever talk about transformation. We have to have intensive collaboration and negotiation with vendors. So at 2015, we said, let's go to a digital uh, innovation program. And the core of digital innovation program is in preparing the ecosystem so that to own, uh, to own our agility. So we were uh, investing on platforms and then forcing our vendors to give us open systems, API, APIs, data platforms, and then hiring technology uh, graduates from university. So we are transforming from a minimum support staff and then with the role of support to enabler, enabling the business using those platforms, uh, using our capabilities. And at the fall of 2018, we have changed bring uh, the digital acceleration program. This time, the, the, the strategy of the business and the corporate are together. It's not, it's not like the IT having small support role and then support strat structure, and it evolves to have, like you have a business strategy and technology strategy. At the fall of 2008, it's blended together. We have sales, for example, if you talk about sales, we have a digital sales strategy. So the, you can imagine the investment, uh, the technology requirement, the boardroom, the daily disc, weekly meetings, it's all about how we are driving the digital operation, the digital sales. And then we are evaluating all the time in terms of providing global standard service using technology and then running efficiently being a cost leader company. So it becomes now a core competency of Ethiopian, especially uh, this year, those couple of years implementing mobility, cloud, those ecosystems that will, that will help us to regain the agility on the technology space also. Yeah, that's, a, that's, that's really amazing. So I guess what you're saying is the role of IT went from, hey, you're here to support us when the computer goes down and whatever it may be the basics to actually no, IT is going to have a seat at the top table and is going to be an accelerator, a catalyst for our growth. We're going to give you that seat and we're going to, we're going to really put, put emphasis um, you know, into that, which is great. So let's talk about what that approach has actually delivered. Tell us a little bit about some of your biggest successes to date as a result of putting technology right at the forefront of the airline. Oh, yeah, I can mention maybe two projects. As I've told you, we have over 200 systems. We have actually publicized back in 2015, we are a paperless company. So you can imagine from small attendance control to even cafeteria, live alone, our core value chain, uh, everything is digital. So to mention quite a few interesting projects, uh, the corporate data warehouse project of Ethiopian. Uh, we had the, we had actually uh, a management accounting department in charge of bringing data from different systems, preparing reports for the management. It takes a lot of time, somehow errorness, multiple version of the truths about business. So the, the excuse, they don't have real time inside of the business, mm. which is, you know, very volatile. Opportunities are there to react immediately. So uh, we were working with uh, my team on this business intelligence program, we have integrated all the critical data from heterogeneous systems, be it distribution, sales, uh, revenue, accounting, financial systems into a corporate data warehouse. And all the management was, uh, were able to have a single version of the truth at their desk, at their fingertip. So to know about uh, yesterday, how was my revenue, for example, I'm driving now the e-commerce business so in real time, in real, near real time, I can see how was my morning online performance, which, which city is contributing low, high, what is the trend from last week, from this week, I can have different dimension of my business. So the executives, the boardroom meeting, as using business intelligence, and all tactical, strategic, operational people, they have single version of the truth of the data. It's among the successful projects I managed with my uh, very talented team. That's amazing. So it's literally, you know, to the minute. So you can be sat in the boardroom with that 
dashboard kind of showing you live this is what's going on and we can just pull that up because like you say the leaders of those departments they don't want to go into the deep dive they just need the 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 top level numbers and the the metrics they need to make decisions exactly um so that's yeah that's i mean this is traditionally a problem with with any data is you can extrapolate and do the work but if that takes weeks to get the result then it's those many weeks out of date already and can you trust it because the world moves especially in our industry yeah. um so exactly. yeah so that's one great project and uh, the other the other one you were going to tell us about as well yeah uh maybe on the first one it's a game changer it changed the culture of course everybody talks on a single data on a single version of the truth so for example as executive you see this is our revenue yesterday you go down to region you go down to the route you go down to the station into the system it's just a call away. Hey, you have to do something. You have to change it tomorrow. So we are talking about today and tomorrow. So that historical narrative, historical data, historical discussions are uh, discussion of the past. We are yeah. now making the campaign to discuss today and uh, uh, leveraging the opportunities to navigate uh, from the market. Uh, so uh, the second one is uh, mobility. We were lagging actually uh, in terms of providing mobile experience for customers. Uh, back in 2018, uh, there are several reasons for this. Because if we have to own agility, we have uh, positioned our strategy, we need open platform. Because the customer demand is quite growing and technology providers are coming up with a uh, package that will give opportunity for us to run our business. So having the customer demand and the technology providers pushing new ways of doing business, we need to have a platform where we can have accelerated innovation. So we purchased all the platforms from vendors, open systems. We moved to cloud, APIs, uh, and all the, the technology packages that will help us to be agile. So in two weeks, in, I mean, in two months, we designed and rolled out a mobile app from scratch. It was uh, uh, initially with credit cards, basic credit cards, conventional cards. Uh, but, but the most amazing one of this project is we have shifted from a project-based uh, uh, product management to a product line, continuously evolving product line streams. So you have a dedicated team uh, as product managers, technical staffs on cloud and mobility. They are only dedicated for mobile. So they have identified opportunities from the providers and technology and they look at the customer behavior. So we have for the past two years, we are having almost 17 releases. Every, in every, every two months, we have a new release. We have new surprise for our customers. Mm-hmm. So after two years now, we have 1.1 million users of the app and then we have 40 over 40 payment options. For example, in China, you have Alipay, WeChat, Brazil, Installment, Africa, our home market. We have M-Pesas, mobile money, MTA, and banks. Uh, especially the African market, we have the largest payment provider for the airlines. And the most interesting fa- figure is also how is this contributing to the system? Mobile is contributing 50%. I mean, 15% of our sales is now from mobile. So we are mobile first strategy mobile first product mobile first service now Uh, it's all developed in-house with uh, our tech graduates as i as i mentioned one of the pillars human development we have hired a very extremely talented team uh, from universities and then we have been delivering trainings and creating a space where they can innovate using different agile methodologies yeah, it's amazing. I mean, it's it's African solutions for you know in in that African African context led by led by yourself. And I suppose the thing that jumps out at me here is the whole reason the app was created. You know, and like you were saying, you kept keep talking about being customer centric, and this is something that 
we talk about so much when it comes to looking at doing things a bit differently, which of course this pandemic has given us all the opportunity or the necessity to look at things differently. And the words I always use is reduce the friction. So, you know, by allowing people to do all those different payment solutions and, and yeah, sell point mobile, I believe are the company uh, and we work with them as well here at Avia dev who, who brought in these, these payment solutions with that it gives it reduces the friction. Somebody from China uses WeChat Pay. Why can't they use that to book a flight on Ethiopian Airlines, you know, or whatever it is that they want to use? And then, of course, it gives you opportunities as well to reduce the friction of communication. So, you know, you can send people boarding announcements. You can upsell. Um, I imagine you can also sell ancillary and make ancillary exactly. revenue through the, through the app as well. So have you seen a big uptake in that? Just to talk a little bit about the kind of, ancillary side of things you know what kind of things can you can you book you can book upgrades through the app and extra luggage and things like that is that is that working for you yeah yeah sure uh actually one of the strategies of the app is now uh we want to make it a single single window to all services of ethiopian airlines as we speak we are availing uh excess baggage you can buy excess baggage online within the app uh, you can buy upgrades, you can buy seat. Uh, now, we want to make the app actually Amazon of a travel. Uh, we have heard a lot about it <laughs> with different airlines, but we have structured, strat strategically positioned it to sell hotels, uh, package, tour packages, and cars. Anything a passenger uh, wants uh, when he's traveling from point A to point B. So we are just aggregating all the ancillary experiences on top of the basic services to our customers within the app. Yeah, amazing. And and yeah, I mean, I obviously, I've stayed at the hotel, the Skylight Hotel, which is, you know, the shuttles from the airport, it's right there. Um, you know, it's fantastic, fantastic. And that shows that not just in the digital space are you doing this, but actually physically you're investing in the wider infrastructure. And I know that, that you know, it, within Ethiopia, there's a real... Um, focus on getting everybody around the table, the tourist board, the airline, the, the, the airport company, the civil aviation. So you're all on the same, on the yeah. same agenda, uh, which I think, you know, is, is obviously is, is a great, is a great model. So one of the things I wanted to talk to you about, because we discussed this back in, uh, in March is of course um, for the passengers and for the transit passengers, there was a project that you launched about e-visa and sort of like a city tour and, a, a bit of a bit of a stopover package so can you tell us a little bit about that because i believe that was a project you were involved in as well yeah sure uh yeah part of this uh digitally connected experience core of our strategy uh the experience is now not limited with ethiopian we have to involve all stakeholders the customer of today they, they don't know behind the scenes who is involved in immigration there are a lot of stakeholders so we have to bring them on board to provide seamless travel experience. Yeah, travel to Ethiopia was somehow uh, not efficient. People have to take, uh, to go to embassy uh, and also it takes a couple of days. It wasn't seamless. So we, we have uh, gathered with immigration and airports how we can, provide, how we can make travel to Ethiopia much easier and the, the, more, the most convenient one. So we designed, we, we set up a team and we designed a product called eVisa. And uh, we, we just did, uh, have a goal of providing eVisa within four hours. We started from that four hours, putting customer at the center and then we re engineering our process and technologies internally with our immigration team. So the eVisa you, you apply, you pay, we availed conventional credit cards and then you secure your e-visa within four hours into your email. And when you arrive in Addis, you, if you have the digital body, the digital visa, you, they can scan. And then it's, it takes quite a few minutes to uh, leave uh, the airport. So we have actually re-engineered the whole process. And in a year, past year, we, before COVID, we have 250,000 customers using e-visa we started with leisure a uh, uh, few countries now anybody be it tourist or businessman 
they can, we have availed all visa types within the system. But the other interesting part is the transit experience. We have got a lot of feedbacks having world-class airline, sim good service. The airport uh, transit experience was not matching the onboard experience. So we extended the collaboration now uh, to hotels. So we onboard immigration, hotels, airport, and Ethiopian together. How we can make this transit layover experience quite smoother. Uh, because we provide for layover this hotel package, uh, hotel uh, transfer, and visa. So we designed together a system called Filaris with the Ethiopian Airlines app. Right after the check-in from the departure, uh, you generate a pass which contains your hotel and transit visa. So the hotel people, they know beforehand when are you coming and from which country, your arrival time. Immigration, they have already the data. We have integrated. So it's just seamless experience now. You don't have to collect, trans you don't have to line up at transit office to collect the visa cards. You don't have to line up at the departure to collect your hotel voucher. So this collaborative effort is all about making travel to Ethiopia, be it transit or tourist or business much easier. And then we are investing actually uh, a lot, especially uh, our government. Next time when you visit Addis, you have renovated palace, uh, parks, two big parks uh, in the city. So all we are working also on the attraction side, on the attraction side and on, as of business together. So we'll make uh, the stay of our passengers to Ethiopia much easier, convenient, comfortable and enjoyable. Absolutely, because obviously being such a massive country, if you've only got an afternoon or a, or a 24 hour period, unfortunately, you're not able to see some of the most amazing parts of Ethiopia. But of course, Addis is, has got so much to discover. So yeah, it makes, 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 makes perfect sense. So digital transformation, I mean, we were going to talk about, you know, is this, this is, this is obviously key to the, to your success and has driven a lot of the, a lot of the success over the last, last few years. Um, just trying to understand, you know, if we've got other airlines listening now, are these solutions available to them? Can you help them? Are you working with your, your equity partners, you know, your, your other partners in Africa to roll out similar solutions? Because it definitely sounds like, first of all, it's working. Secondly, you have a team that's obviously developed this. So, you know, how does, how does that work? Yeah, sure. Obviously, we want to help. We have invested a lot and we want from a strategy perspective to empower uh, Africans to run their own airline uh, by partnership. Uh, we want to have uh, African carriers to have significant share uh, of the market. So in every aspect, from a corporate partnership perspective, from a technology perspective, we, not, we want to help Africans run efficient business. So the first engagement we had after we rolled out these projects is uh, exporting those capabilities to our partners. We did with Askai, uh, Malawi, Chad. Uh, and now we are creating a separate team uh, which, ran, which helps airlines uh, who want such kind of facilities like what we used to have. So uh, we, we are now planning to have a separate team, a separate marketing product and technology team. The best uh, the best thing here is we have full stack delivery. Mm. We have, we know the business. Uh, we have technology for the infrastructure and application. We have a service so we can, we can have provide managed service for any of the airlines uh, in Africa. Th that's in our plan. We are arranging ourselves uh, to publicize it recently. Fantastic. Fantastic. So just got a couple more, couple more questions before we go. And, and the first one is just um, relating to uh, something we talked about before, before we started recording, which is something that's been playing on all of our minds. It's all a bit of a bit of guesswork, but of course, you know, what we're doing right now is we are having a conversation uh, via a technological platform and ideally, yes, we'd be sat having a lovely cup of Ethiopian coffee together in your office. But of course, it's not possible. And of course, people have had to 
the, the, the whole move towards technology was already coming, but it's been accelerated as, as a result of the pandemic. So from an Ethiopian standpoint, with the big hotel, with Scala Hotel and the conferencing facilities, and obviously a lot of corporate traffic and corporate travelers, you know, how do you see digital affecting demand short, medium, long term? And, and you know, this is you talking as somebody who's a, a, a digital professional, not necessarily the Ethiopian perspective, but you feel free to give us that if you if you are privy to share that with us as well. Yeah, of course, uh, when you scan the technological developments, uh, actually, we had identified this uh, one of the strategic issue uh, to consider what to consider initially in, in all of uh, our visions. But the COVID <laughs> makes it order of the day. So, uh, for example, uh, for Ethiopian, we used to have a lot of meetings, uh, gathering or all stations globally making events in Addis. Uh, imagine the logistics, cost of operation, the time we spend. Now we are managing everything just within an hour <laughs> from every country, every station. Uh, for us, we are driving excellence. We are running efficiency uh, in terms of uh, uh, minimizing the time spent and the cost of operation. So I, I feel the same works for other business, especially this time when you have uh, all the business are slowing down, economic problem. So cost of operation is uh, really what concerns the management. So travel costs will be one of the issues. Uh, we are anticipated this one, but for us, actually, we have different uh, segment. Mm. Tra tourism to Africa, uh, families, we have huge diaspora community, uh, uh, Africans flying to uh, their home continent, back and forth. Uh, there, there, is, there, is, there should be an impact for those who have, who have made this corporate business bread and butter. It's a significant impact. But we, we, are, we will not be also uh, feel isolated from the impact. But uh, we, we, we need to, uh, the thing here is, uh, especially, we call it VUCA, the airline industry. It's highly volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. It's not about the strategy that you place back in 10 years or 15 years. It's all about agility. Agility is the only competitive advantage. So we found out new way of doing business and then uh, reducing the impact of such kind of technological change to our business. Yeah, ab absolutely. I mean, from from my side, the way we are looking at this, and I think I was saying this to you before, you know, so I may as well put, put my head on the block as well, is I think that, you know, the things that when, when companies look at this, there's a couple of things. One is that I think we're all coming to the realization after sort of six months of not being able to see each other that doing business, having really meaningful conversations is very difficult to do. Um, through a technological platform, and you know, I would think that potentially the meetings that that that, that don't go ahead um, in person are the ones uh, that are sort of one to one, where there isn't something super needed that you need to be there. That hopefully things like the Aviadev platform and events platforms are going to become more important because they can't really be replicated very easily um, to make the same connections, to have the same number of conversations in different environments. Uh, you know. It, it's it's just really really difficult but um you know technology is is playing its role it wouldn't i wouldn't be here today doing what i do from a different continent you know i'm running an african african company really from the uk and i haven't been able to come for six months so it's um it, it's it's really been a blessing and i think that you know it will play its part and it's going to as i say it's accelerated its position within what we do on a day-to-day -day basis but there'll never be a substitute At the end of the day we're not we're not cyborgs we are human beings and we need human interaction to 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 develop relationships to trust people to have those conversations i think that's that's you know that's that's really important so um finally for you uh if people want to find out more if we've got airlines listening and they're saying, hey, I, I think I need to speak to the guys at Ethiopian and just have a conversation and reach out because we're all about collaboration. What's the best way for them to, uh, to get in touch? Uh, I have my email, uh, uh, LinkedIn, 
email. Fantastic. So what? So email what I'll do? The best. Great. I'll put I'll put a link in the show notes. So anybody listening, you can I'll put a link in for uh, Miratab's um, LinkedIn, and you can connect with him on there, and then have the initial conversation, and then uh, and then obviously take it forward, uh, take it forward from there. But yeah, I mean, honestly, uh, it's been a real, real pleasure having you on the podcast today, Miratab, and uh, you know, you, you've you've really, you know, gives gives us all a sense of uh, hope and optimism. Um, what's been really achieved, you know, something that's homegrown, that's been developed. Some of the timelines you talk about are just just amazing, but it's that agility, like you said, the agility is the word I'm taking away today. Um, the ability to adapt to the situation, and that that's gonna gonna hold us all in uh, in in good uh, good stead moving forward. So, thank you so much for joining us, and um, greetings to all of your colleagues. Thank you, John. Thank you for having me. Fantastic. So thanks to everybody out there for taking the time to listen to us today. As always, all that we ask is you share this episode with one person in your network that you think will benefit from having a listen. Don't forget to subscribe either on our YouTube channel at AviaDev or via the podcast. And, um, you know, don't forget to leave us a review as well. That would be fantastic if you can do that in the, uh, in the Apple store as well. And we'll see you for the next episode very soon. Thanks to all of you for joining us.